Welcome back, everyone. So let's get started. So today we're going to continue. We're almost um, at the end of the seven steps of the healing process. And we're going to be discussing how to take steps to fill this gap, what's missing of what we needed when we were younger, or what we need. And now that we're older, we can give it to ourselves. And that's the positive piece over here. That's the good part of all of this. It's actually possible to, to do it to ourselves. We don't need to get it from others. Yes, we could get it from others and um, seeing how our life is, realizing that um, we're not the way we're th we think we are, the beliefs that we picked up, but we can get it from ourselves also. So let's get started. Before we start, let's get grounded, see where we are. Take a deep breath. How am I feeling? Where am I coming from? What did my day look like? And you can check around, you know, if your physical, the room where you're sitting, become aware of where you are and then you become aware of the inside of yourself how you're feeling and if you've been with us on this journey you can start identifying feelings letting them be seeing where you feel them in your body and just to see what it looks like. What does it feel like? And let, and let it be. It doesn't mean anything. It's okay. So like we discussed till now, we've learned how to connect with our inner child, what it means, that there's something inside of us might be shut down we might it might be many years that we've not been in touch with that peace with that little kid and we've done some meditation some guided meditation how to meet that inner child the, our wants and our needs to let it talk and the first few times some people when they meet it, it doesn't talk too much because it doesn't really trust because it tried many times and it decided that it's not going to talk because it wasn't a positive experience or nobody was there to be for it, just to accept it. But now we're learning how to, how to actually be there for that inner child. And when you finally meet it, see what age it is, see what it looks like, might be very upset or it might be happy positive negative we've gotten both feedback finding it playing and having a good time or actually waiting for you and running to you to, to hug you sit on your lap to be there finally you're aware and you want to see it talk to it or angry negative where have you been all of these years and we're not judging, whatever it is, let it come up. That's the second piece to validate. Whatever it brings up, like a little kid complaining, let it, just listen. Whatever ideas, there's no right and wrong. If it feels a certain way, then that's how it feels. Be there for it, hold it, give it space to bring up those feelings. Again, it's a little kid doesn't always understand what you understand. You might be an adult and you might tell yourself that's so silly. But when you say that, that little child is going to have to shut down again. You want it to come up. You want it to talk a little bit. You want it to express those feelings. Once it can express those feelings, we identify of what came up. What are the stories? What type of neglect? 
what are the experiences that we've gone through? It might be six-year-old, five-year-old, three-year-old, or maybe older, 10, 12, whatever it is. You've tried to be friends and they didn't accept you. There was an adult that um, didn't listen. So you decided subconsciously that feelings are not something that we need to discuss. Just put it away. And all of these years, you might be living that way. You know, we need to grow up fast. The one example somebody mentioned was if somebody's the oldest in the family, responsibility. They have to grow up pretty fast. When they're five already, they have to take care of the, you know, the next child. Or, you know, we, ex we expect from them because they're the oldest, we expect much more. And you didn't have that time that you can just be, have fun. And now you're meeting again that little child, that inner child, and it's complaining. It wants to just let loose. So listen to it. We become aware of the neglect or um, of parenting style, how, our, how we dealt, how our parents dealt with our situation, with our emotions, were they there to, to let it be, to listen? Or maybe they weren't aware, maybe they also grew up that way, that emotions are not something that we should discuss. And like we mentioned last week, Holocaust survivors were the only way they were able to continue was with logic. And we can't judge them. And it makes sense because there was so much that they went through. If they, if they would be, tap into their emotions, they wouldn't be able to continue. The only way they can continue is with thanking Hashem that they're alive, that they have food, they have a, a roof on their heads, and now let's do what we need to do. And when the kids try to express emotions, there's no place for that. There was no place. So just being aware of that. And once we're aware of the experiences, we embrace those emotions. Let it come up. If it's too hard, it might be a good idea to do it with a therapist. It could bring up a lot of hard emotions. And if somebody finds themselves in bed for many days, well, yeah. Um, therapy works and it helps and give it to yourself if you need it but what we're discussing here is that even those who feel that Baruch Hashem they're fine they have a functioning life Baruch Hashem and uh, pretty much beautiful from the outside but there's some, something missing not always can you pinpoint it can be a feeling of of emptiness which we'll see soon so we identified what happened, embrace the emotion, let the emotion come up. And then last week we discussed where it makes a difference in our life. Here are some ideas of how it can play out even as an adult. And we might not be aware of all of this before we started this uh, Wednesday nights, it could be you didn't, you didn't know anything about um, the stresses and, and the anxiety or the, or the experiences that you went through as a child. We think we get older, we're smarter, we're logical, and things are okay. Whatever happened, happened, and now we're good. But we don't realize that it does have an effect. It does go over even later, even if you're much older. If it's not something that we've dealt with and uh, heal, heal it in, in, in the right way, then it stays there. So here are some examples. Again, these are, if it happens once in a while, that's okay. But if somebody finds these ideas more than, you know, pretty often, then it's probably something and a belief about yourself, about your surroundings, about your life. So... I, I want to do tonight, if we can do a little bit, um, a little bit interactive, if you can let me know in the chat. Again, the chat is private. It comes only to me. Just put in one or two words, things that came up 
whether it's you identified something when you were younger or a feeling about yourself. And you can put, put it in the chat while we're going to go through these ideas. And if something triggers, if you feel um, it resonates, put in put it in the chat so I can see you know, you know the feedback. Okay. Just a second. Can you open the chat over here? Just a second. Okay. So Sometimes st stress coming from trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, right? Somebody who is unavailable, unavailable for themselves, for their spouse, their kids. Increasing likelihood for an eating disorder, feeling deeply personally flawed. You're always walking around thinking, so there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong. Or there's a feeling of emptiness. You know, you, you can be a successful person, which I've met many times. People from the outside, they have a business or family. Their life from the outside is really, really beautiful. And they'll even tell to me. And that's, you know, they're wondering why. They're looking around, you know, everything is working. Everything is fine. Why do I feel that there's something missing? And you think, you know, maybe if, you make uh, more money or if that would change, if this would change, but people have all that. And there's still some emptiness and, some, and most of the time it really goes down to that core belief, core idea about yourself. Poor self-discipline, you wanna do something and you push it off. You're not in control of your wants and needs. For some reason you find yourself all over the place. Guilt and shame about, about, it could be something that you did wrong, but it's taking over, it's taking over too much. And you're walking around with that guilt and shame about yourself. Anger and aggressive behaviors. Again, we are human. And once in a while, we could find ourselves getting angry. And I believe it's healthy. It shows that you're in tuned and... You're not suppressing. However, if you're walking around with this, this idea, you're walking around with it very often, wherever you go, you get triggered and there's a lot going on. You feel angry and aggressive behaviors, then there's something to look into. Just a second, what? Yeah. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, thank you very much for the feedback. Please continue. If anything comes up, put it in those feelings so we can um, do some uh, ideas based on that. So personally flawed, feeling bad um, about yourself or a, a lot of your day is, is an example that comes up. Uh, some people uh, people mentioned that they have a hard time eating certain foods, and that's a, you know it's a very good indicator. Maybe when they were younger, it was something they have to eat, so we had to eat up everything we had on our plates. This is an interesting story that my my grandmother she's not alive anymore, but when I went, I was ten years old. I went to her for Shabbos, and <clears throat> I remember the dessert. It was very sweet, and I didn't like it, so I didn't finish it. Before you knew it, that was Friday night. On Shabbos day, I got the same dessert, the same plate. <laughs> I got it for dessert. It's, you know, you left over. This, it's still good, so you didn't want it for now, so you'll eat it a different time, which... Which again, we, we, we understand, we're not here to judge, but just to see of our reactions today, if it's based on the way we grew up. The last one over here is difficulty trusting 
others or relying upon anyone else. See, it's interesting because you're not trusting other people. That means you're doing everything yourself, right? So that means you, you believe you're okay. You don't need the help of others. And if you do need help of others, that's a weakness. So you think you're strong, okay. I don't need anybody's help. I can do it myself. But let's think about it for a minute. You don't trust other people, so you're going to do it yourself. So that means really it's, it's, it's something inside of you that you, you would love to have other people helping you out, being in your life. But you're too, you know, you think it's strong, but it's too weak to be able to identify and say, could you please help me? I can't do everything myself. That means I'm still okay if you help me. But we, sometimes we can't do that. See, I'm not okay only if I can do everything myself. If I need your help, that means I'm flawed. Something is wrong with me. But what we really need to realize is that we're okay even if we need help. Because sometimes we need to delegate, whether it's at work or it's at home. And sometimes because we're human. Sorry, <laughs> I know we're human. We want to pretend that we don't need any, you know, we don't need anybody. I can do everything myself. I'm fine. I'm good. But really deep down, deep, deep down, you believe that if you do need help from others, if you do need help from other people, then it's a weakness. So I can't show it. I can't show other people that I'm human. I need to show them that I don't need anybody. I can do everything myself. It's a very, very important awareness. Here's an example of emotional neglect. If a child comes home and wants to share any story with their parents. So here's the, the, the child comes home and wants to share sad, they feel sad about a friend at school. And the parents, probably because they're not aware of how to hold these feelings, how to be there and just create that space, which we're learning here, it brushes off. And instead of listening, and helping the child figure out how to cope with the situation. You say, you know, why, why are you so worried about that child? What, 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 is, what difference does it make to you? Or no, that's not true. It doesn't feel that way. Or you shouldn't feel that way. Why are you feeling bad for that child? And what does the eight-year-old say when his parent, or the adult, says that? They start thinking, hmm, maybe there is something I'm not aware of. Maybe these things are, are something I shouldn't be thinking about. It shouldn't make a difference. So they might even try to come home and share again, or three times or four times, but after a while, they learn from the adults that feelings that they feel about whatever is going on is not something that's, or they don't feel the right feelings. You shouldn't feel that way. And over time, the child begins to learn that their emotional needs are not important. And what happens when our emotional needs are not important? I better put it away. Even though I do have emotions, I do have feelings. I have positives and negatives, but I need to put it away. And when I feel I need support, I'm sorry. There's no one to go to because I tried many times. And what happened was basically, basically was shut down subconsciously. Perfectionism is also something that comes up. I just want to read this. Um, thank you very much for putting it into the chat. If you have a perfectionist and critical parent. So this person had a mother like that, always asked me to tell her something happy because she needed you to make her happy. And as a young kid, what are you supposed to do? And then eventually all of these ideas Yes, and then when you get older, you're confused. A lot of confusion. Thank you for sharing. And this is why it's very important to go back again. If it's something that it brings up emotions that are very, very hard to feel and go back to those stories, then it would be a good idea to have somebody to sit with you, to hold your hands, to listen slowly, 
talk about it and realize what you're feeling now is based on something that you picked up when you were younger. But if you could go back to, you know, realize these ideas, if it's not too heavy, to go back and see what we needed when we were younger. Childhood emotional neglect can damage a child's self-esteem. And I believe if somebody is lacking self-esteem, automatically there are mental health issues. It teaches them their feelings are not important. The consequences of this neglect can be deep and last a lifetime. Many are not aware of it. We're not here to make others aware. We're here for ourselves to see where we are and if there's any connection. Treatment for childhood emotional neglect can help children who were neglect neglected overcome the feelings of emptiness and inability to handle their emotions, not understanding their emotions, to be able to handle it, first we need to understand it. Parents can learn to better relate to their children and prevent the cycle from happening again. Here we are now, wherever we are, whether we're a grandparent, a parent, a child listening to this presentation, wherever it is, we can be there for, for the people around us. So when they share, we can listen. We understand that that's what need, what's needed. It doesn't mean we need to fix anything, just to be able to listen and be there. So that's what we really need to discuss tonight, which we're going to do it, you know, it's, it's something that we, we're just going to touch upon is to take the steps to fill the gap. And again, yes, we can take care of ourselves now as an adults. We can see what we were lacking when we were younger and give it to us. So an example is if, you didn't have any friends, you felt you weren't accepted. So that's a deep feeling that you've gotten when you're very young, whatever the story was, whether it's a school or your neighborhood, and there was no one there to, um, to help you with the situation. It could be a try to share with the parents, but they, they said, what's the big deal? Just, just play with them, but it didn't work. So now when you're older, it's, you know, if you don't have, you could make, you can have new relationships. You can realize that you have, and everybody does. Most people do. Has you know, we have something to look at and say, you know, I'm I'm accepted. People like me. I'm okay. And you come up with these ideas, which you can give yourself what you needed when you were that eight year old. Finances. An example is if you grew up poor and you weren't able to buy what you wanted, maybe you couldn't eat too much, there wasn't a lot in the house. And the, it did bring up an emotion which you felt scared, worried, maybe fear of the unknown. And now when you're older, it could be you have, you know, you're, you're making enough money, but you still have that fear. Again, you should learn how to budget don't go spending, you know, so some people just spend much more than they can because of that way they grew up. But try to, you know, now as an adult, figure out what do you have, how you can spend it, and not go continue the cycle of the way you grew up. And uh, the acceptance, like we discussed, and really it's self-acceptance. Where you are now, where am I in my life? No matter what's going on, there obviously there are positives and negatives. Nobody's perfect, but to accept myself the way I am now. And that can be hard. Self-acceptance can be very, very hard. And I do want to mention before we go to the next slide and we finish for tonight, we have to remember that when the, when the inner child brings up an emotion, don't dismiss it and say, well, now you have enough money, so why do you feel that way? So this is a piece that we, I just want to stop here for a minute because this is very important. If, for example, somebody grew up with no money in the house, okay, so there's that fear, that feeling of we don't deserve, we don't have, there's a, you know, some, some deep feeling, 
of fear of the unknown. And you get to talk to your inner child and it brings it up. So you'll say, okay, but big deal. Why are you bringing that up from then? Now you have enough. Go take care of yourself. What you just did was you pushed it away. You pushed away that thought, that emotion that it brought up. We've done that for many years. We want to stop doing that. Let the emotion come up. Feel it and say, I understand where it's coming from. I hear you. Don't run right away to the solution. Be there with the emotion. Spend time with that idea that it brings up. And then you can say, okay, so what would you like now? What can I give you now that make you feel a little bit better? But it's only after you've let that emotion come up, after you've let that, that, that voice, that idea come up. Because if you tell yourself the whole time, don't be nervous. Don't, don't, why, are you making, why, why are you feeling that way? Well, don't, it's, it's, it's over, it's fine, everything is good. Again, you're feeling that way. And then the next day you wake up the same idea. Pushing away thoughts is just making them stronger. It's making them louder. So like we discussed in the past, let it be. Let it come up. See it and understand it. Be there for it. And after you have give, give it that space, you can go to the next step and say, okay, what can I give you now that will make you feel better? So that's a very important piece of not dismissing. So basically, that is what we've really discussed in the, you know, since I began this presentation. And this is just uh, wrapping up the ideas that we've discussed from class one until we've start, we started the seven steps of healing. But the idea is to let the emotions come up, understand emotions. I'm just going to go over this slide very fast. And these are the concepts that we discussed from day one. So in class number one, to understand why many people are busy, why our brain keeps ourselves busy. We don't want to stop because it brings up emotions. But what we're, we're looking for, that inner peace feeling, for that relaxed feeling, for that really letting our body relax, not only our mind, our body to relax. We need to accept, let those emotions come up. Because that's the reason why we're running away. Because we're scared of those negative emotions. Sitting in the space, we discussed, like, what Viktor Frankl mentions between stimulus and response, there's stimulus all day. If we're not aware of the stimuli in our life and then how we respond to it, we're always running and fixing things, making sure there's no problems, take care of, take care of this, put on a Band-Aid. Just continue routine, don't stop. We're always running. And if we're gonna stop and become aware of what's going on, negativity, we have to build some positivity. Everybody has some positive. There's no such thing of no positives. Start building the list. Deep breathing to help relax, to be in the moment, even though negative things come up. We become comfortable with the uncomfortable. When the inner child, it, when it, it shares things that you don't like to listen to, you don't want to hear it again. You don't want to bring it up. It's been many years that you've, buried it but you can bring it up and it's okay you feel uncomfortable start learning what emotions are to understand what it is it doesn't stay there for long it comes and goes like the waves let it come and breathe mindfulness helps to be in the moment the havening technique also a very powerful technique we've mentioned that it helps for people who come back from from war to be able to give them that space and to be able to relax. Positive affirmation. Again, to, to find the positivity, which many people are not aware of, there's always negative thoughts. To identify and release emotions, become aware of what comes up and to release them, which we're learning now, these seven steps. When thoughts come up, understand that that doesn't mean anything about you. We're so used to listening to those thoughts. It says, I'm a failure. 
So that means I'm a failure because I just heard I'm a failure. But if you can just back up and hear what, you, what your mind is saying, that doesn't mean you're a failure. Your mind might say it. You have to learn how to see it and let it go. Detach from it. And then it boils down to some self-love, self-love affirmations. Be able to love yourself, accept yourself. Again, accept is before love. Love can be hard for many people. But to be able to accept yourself, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on in your life, continue breathing, it might be hard, so that you can be able you can love yourself and only then you can love others. And then we started um, with the guided meditation to meet our inner child and actually practicing these things that we've learned to be able to be there for that inner child. And then the seven steps that we've done and the next week we'll wrap it up in Mitz Hashem. And uh, that's it for tonight. So I want to thank you very much for sharing. <clears throat> you can share now whatever came up. Any ideas, whether it's positive or negative, something that helps you now as an adult. Even though you've come up with some things that you don't like, it opens, sometimes can open a can of worms. You become aware of it. And you learn how to see it, listen to it, and what you can do about it. So thank you very much. And I will read what you share in the chat. If you would like to ask live, go ahead. I was always accepted as a friend, as a rabbi's daughter, as an adult. Some people excluded me. Still was hurtful to be excluded. And now I am a very inclusive person, which is beautiful. Look around and realize that you are inclusive. And the ideas that come up, it might say people are not interested in you. You can say, you can see it. Let it be, let it come up. Again, don't right away run to that solution and say it's not true. Listen, when your inner child shares, don't say it's not true. Look around. I, if you feel about yourself, you feel unworthy. You feel unaccepted. You tell yourself, it's not true. Look, everybody's accepting you. But then again, you're pushing away that child. Let it come up. I try to use positive messages to dispute the negative voices. Beautiful. I just want to put in a little bit of space going right away from listening to the negative voices and right away coming up with the positive voices, right? Which we think is going to help. Just continue with positive, positive. But then you're really fighting those negative voices and you're not letting that negative voice come up. The negative voice is coming from that inner child that feels a certain way. And you're going to tell yourself a positive for example, if your negative voice says you're unworthy, you don't deserve. And you're going to sit there and say, I do deserve, I do deserve, I do deserve. So basically you're fighting that, that voice and you're shutting it down. You're trying to shut it down. Let's not do that. Let it come up. Sit there for a few minutes, breathe. And see that voice saying you are unworthy. And smile. Just listen to it. That's the inner child sitting on your lap and saying, I feel unworthy. Well, whatever story, you might be aware of, of the story. You might not be aware of the story. Let it come up. And listen and breathe. Say, I hear you. That's it. Mm. You could say, mm. <laughs> just come up with like, I hear. Listen, if that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. It's, it's, it's uncomfortable. Wow, I wonder what happened. If you're not aware, I wonder what happened when you were young. Maybe you can tell me. And if they could, let them talk. Listen. If they don't, just sit with that feeling. And after you've given them the space, you've listened, you've let them voice their opinions. Now you can say, you can go to that positive, you know, look around in your life and tell yourself, yes, you are worthy. And you have things to show for that. And you're, you're okay with who you are. 
for those who are afraid of the negative voices. So you can start slowly. Again, again, I don't want you to open a can of worms. We, we are coming up with a lot of negativity here. And you might think, why in the world? Why are you taking me back to those negative stories, ideas, days that I don't want to go back to? But like we mentioned, if we're not going to go back and heal it slowly, it really runs our life. Our life today is based on those ideas. What we do today is based on those ideas. So we want to go back there. And if we need somebody to sit on the side, hold our hands, go ahead, find somebody. But we do want to go back to those stories and listen to those negative voices. If we know that the negative voice is not really us, it's our mind saying something. You can listen to it and smile. It doesn't mean it's you. That's how it feels. Let it come up. Thank you very much for, for sharing and for coming tonight. That's it for tonight. What's next week? I don't know if we're going to meet next week on Wednesday night, or maybe we should meet and have a party. So, uh, let's see. Next week, Wednesday night. Looks exciting on my calendar. So happy Purim for everyone. And it's a, another good time. Like I mentioned before, these um, different days come up. It could be a Yom Tov, something that's different in your routine. That's where a lot of things come up. You know, when we're in routine, doing every day the same thing. So, okay, we know already what to do. And we keep busy and we don't have to go back to those feelings of what we're discussing here. But when we need to figure out things, what to do about Purim, where are we going to go? If the family is going to come, they're not going to come. Emotions, emotions, emotions. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Sometimes it can be heavy. It could be heavy. Find some time, write it down. Let things happen. Let it play out. See how you take it. Keep on breathing. <laughs> and um, bring back your feedback in two weeks of Mitzvah Shem. And uh, happy Purim, everyone. And we should be able to slowly but surely give ourselves what we need so we can heal. Have a good night and a good week.